All right, my little puppies. I hope that uh, this is all working. Welcome to the Bosnian Stone Spheres webinar, number seven in a series of 10 now for Portal to Ascension. Thanks for joining us. I'm just gonna um, <clears throat> start, start off by mentioning that uh, Neil is driving through Colorado right now, so he uh, is not, unable to host the meeting. So I hope that uh, all of you can uh, bear with me while I try to host and uh, be the guest at the same time. So I guess it's more, it's, it'll be like, so Jock, what do you think about the Bosnian Stone Spheres? Well, I think they're really awesome, Jock. Well, I agree with you. This is a little comedy to, to break through the tension of having been lied to by the orthodoxy in academia for our entire lives. The, uh, the fog, the matrix fog, let's, let's call it, that we grew up in where we have been deceived by well-meaning professors who didn't know they'd been deceived in every possible realm of learning. Um, so a little comedy in the beginning, because it's not really an interview format, it's just slideshow, but I'm gonna bring some videos in too with, with Dr. Semir Ozmanagic, who um, was instrumental in creating the Bosnian Stone Spheres Park in Bosnia. <clears throat> this was after he found the Bosnian pyramids in 2005. He had been a world traveler his whole life and he had written many books on pyramids. Uh, he specialized in the Maya civilization and he wrote an amazing uh, PhD and a book uh, called The World of the Maya. And um, his professors, by the way, uh, gave him a pretty hard time when he wanted to get his PhD in Maya studies talking about pyramids and how they might be energy machines that are sending beams of communication to other planets. They gave him a, they didn't want this to be real, you know? So they just gave him the hardest possible time in every possible way. He had already written a book called, called um, The World of the Maya. And uh, then he went back to get his PhD and he took material from his book, his own book for his PhD you know, thesis. And the professor said he was plagiarizing and he couldn't use that material, even though he had been the one who had written it. And he's like, I, I, I can't plagiarize for myself. And they're like, that's what you're doing. So they just basically gave him the hardest possible time, but he, 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 he you know, revised it. He did what he had to do to get the PhD. And still online, you have people saying, oh, he doesn't even have a PhD. Well, he does. And uh, they get, you know, it was, it was the hardest one PhD on the planet uh, because they saw that he was a force to be reckoned with and they didn't want him they didn't want to give him that legitimacy, but he has it because he's, uh, he overcomes all obstacles in the softest possible way. He's got a very soft and beautiful and gentle way about him. And he just keeps moving forward without fighting. He's moving forward. It's like, a, he's like the Taoist Bosnian, the, uh, the Taoist sage of Bosnia, <laughs> Semir Um So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I'm going to share screen for a second. Um, and we'll see about what's happening. Um, share. Let's see if this works. So you have my screen. There's the academic hamster wheel, right? Where the, and we're, we're going to find out exactly what this hamster wheel is like in the next hour. Okay. And it's going to be, it's going to be like you just went on an amusement park ride. You're going to be dizzy from this craziness. Because when Semir Osmanagic came out with his information, not just about the pyramids, but about the Bosnian stone spheres, um, academia went absolutely crazy and they tried to shut him down in every possible way. I'm not going to go into the drama. It's all documented in uh, my articles, uh, The Mysterious Anti-Scientific Agenda of Robert Schock. That's on my um, An American in Bosnia blog site. That's the Google blog. Then I said, well, Google is just so unuser friendly. I got to switch to an, a blog that I can actually work in, you know, just on a technical level. So I switched over to WordPress. And so there's a, my newer articles on Bosnia and ancient civilizations around the world is it's, it's an American in Bosnia and it's a WordPress site. So those are the newer ones, but the older ones, like the, the first articles I wrote were about Robert Schock, Yonaguni, uh, Bosnian pyramids, because he was the main voice that was sort of stifling conversation, scientific conversation around the world on the internet about these beautiful sites, the uh, Yonaguni and the Bosnian pyramids, because pe people would be talking about it. And I'd see this over and over again. 
And someone would say, wow, I found out about the, out about the Bosnian pyramids. What do you guys think? And then someone would come in and, and say, Robert Schock from Yale said it's not real. And that would just end the conversation that because he had a PhD from Yale. <laughs> so, but it just so happens that, you know, people with PhDs disagree all the time about everything. So the fact that you're an expert <clears throat> um, because you have a PhD, I won't put quotes around the PhD, but expert because you have a PhD doesn't mean that you're right. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that you have studied somewhere and got a PhD. That's all it means. It's like when you, when you put your turn signal on, you learned this in driver's ed, didn't you? They say, what does it mean when you see a car with a turn signal on? And the kids say, it means it's going to turn left or right. And he's like, no, it means his turn signal works. So that's all. You don't know what, you, all you have is a PhD and it doesn't, it doesn't mean your brain is working if you have a PhD. Uh, if you don't have a PhD, you can have a, a brain that's turned on and on fire and, and know what's happening um, and, and have real insights about things. Um, Michael Tellinger is a force to be reckoned with too. And he's good friends with uh, Semi Rosemanagic. He's come out to the Bosnian Pyramid Complex uh, at least twice. Valerie Uvarov, same thing. And, um, but Michael uh, is sort of like a savant. He's, he, he's, he just started learning this stuff and he wrote this book, Slave Species of God. Michael Tellinger, you, you all know him, you all know his name. I spent a month down there doing videography with him after I'd spent quite a long time in the Bosnian Pyramid Complex doing videography for Archaeological Park Foundation, which Dr. Sam Osman, I get started um, uh, after he found the pyramids in Bosnia in 2005. So let's get to, see, that's the article. This is, I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you a few things. I'm going to do a couple maps first, just to orient you to what's happening. So, Zavidivitsi, okay? That's where the Stone Spheres Park is that Dr. Sam Osmanagic created, essentially single-handedly, although um, it was with the help of his, his crew, his, his foundation uh, people. But he, he went to the, the area, the, the politicians that are in that region, and he said, you know, there's trash all around these Stone Spheres and in this little creek. Why don't we all clean it up, and, and then the people can come there and have a park. And, and they said, no, we're not going to do that. So he said, okay, I'm going to do it myself. So he, he, <laughs> he came in with the foundation and he spent his own money basically. Uh, and the, and the, and the money f that, you know, the tourists support the archeological park foundation and Samir supports it. So it's, it's that money goes into one pot and then they spend it on different research projects and excavation projects. So they, they picked up the trash in the Creek where the stone spheres were, and uh, it's a, now it's a beautiful park, and he takes tour to people there all the time. Now I went there in my first time out there as a as a uh, as the official videographer for Archaeological Park Foundation in 2014, and I unfortunately my camera stopped working. I'm not going to go into why, and I was not able to film him giving his talk by the stone spheres. And it was really disappointing to me. I was so, so disappointed. But back, but then uh, over a year later in 2015, I was able to go back. And I got a video and I'm going to show you a condensed version of that video. There, there are some translators talking and they, they go switch back and forth. And I just cut out all the, most of the translations is French and the other one. So that it's just Samir. It's kind of choppy, but it's just Samir talking for most of it. So it's a lot, a lot shorter. And we're going to have that talk, right? Now, now Vistok was down here is where the Bosnian pyramids were found, as many of you know. And, uh, so it's, it's not, it's, uh, you know, not too far, but I remember taking the bus with everybody else both times up here. The second time I went, I'd spent enough time in the pyramid complex to start to recognize structures that might have been built. And it looked like all along this river, the, there, there's, a, there's a river Bosna, or, uh, is what they call it. We just started to say the river Bos or Bosnian River is what we call it. Um, yeah. Is, is there, it's following the river and you see these pyramidal structures along there covered with forests, just like the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun and, and uh, Bosnian Pyramid of Love were covered with kind of scrubby trees, you know, and, and foliage and uh, dirt and were sort of invisible to the native population until Sam Roseman Angich came and said, uh, he took out his compass and said, well, that, that, that's the triangular face oriented to cosmic north. That was the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And that's down here in Visoko. 
So I was seeing the same kind of structures on the way up there, and I kind of wonder if, if there's just pyramids everywhere there. But anyway, we know there are stone spheres everywhere in Bosnia and around the world, right? Um, and and Semir is going to go into detail about that. So let's continue. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's get some other slides going here. Put these up here. Let's see if my slides work. We'll just do this. So this is uh, Dr. Sam Osmanagic, and he's, that's the megasphere there. That's the megasphere that was found later because they had, and that's the megasphere because they had found many stone spheres in this park. 80 came out of a hill, as he'll mention in this video that's coming up. 80, 80 spheres came out of a hill, oddly in a hill. You're like, why would they be in a hill? Well, that's a good question. It's something to ponder. And uh, that was in a big, big, big rainstorm. So there's a big flood of water, like a big uh, river of water that came and just hit this hill and just took all these stone spheres out. Uh, many of them were probably about a third or a half the size of this or even smaller than this. This is just the, the biggest one they found. They found this one later. This was near the base of the hill or at the base of the hill. And it wasn't taken out by the flood. It's kind of next to the creek though. And so a little bit of it did get um, ex excavated just by the creek naturally, I guess, because someone at, in the foundation saw it, saw a little bit poking out and he said, oh, I wonder if I should dig this one, you know, and see what happens. So they started digging and they found this massive sphere. So I wrote an article about it and you'll see, we'll go through the article in detail. Of, this is called the megasphere. I mean, that's what I called it. I don't know. I don't know what else to call it. It's a, it's a massive stone sphere and the orthodoxy, guess what? They call it natural. Um, and we'll, we'll, sh we'll see how that's just absolute nonsense. And it's like the most glib dismissal of really, really good science on the part of Dr. Sam Osmanagic. Let me just, um, I just saw a little blinking thing up at the top here. And I wanna make sure that, let's see, chat. Oh, okay. It's Belinda, she says, wow. I'm just gonna type, yeah, wow, and keep going. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just glad that this is even working because I'm hosting it and I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Neil was like, dude, I'm driving and you can host and if you want or we could do it tomorrow. I was like, let's just do it now. I'll host, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just hoping that anybody can see this. I, I, you know, I guess someone can. That's awesome. Um, so let's do that. But I'll see your, if you want to chat, I'll see your little, the little blinking thing and I'll, I'll, I'll try to get, get to that. So we got a lot of stuff to get to. We got, we got beautiful videos. We've got Semir talking, We've got Russia Today who came out and did a really fair and balanced piece on it. But the orthodoxy here in, in America just trashed this. They just said, no, nope, we're not even going to engage it. It's nonsense. It's not real. It's just a, a concretion. They call it a cannonball concretion. That's a natural thing that just formed. And they always, they, they always go, it formed this and the other 80 stone spheres, you know, it formed. And you're like, okay, well, what formed it? Oh, we, we're not gonna say what formed it. We're just gonna say it formed, it glued itself together. What glued itself, what glued it? What was the force that glued this together? They just don't have any explanation. It's always the same. It's the same thing with the earth. It formed, really, it formed. Well, that's cool, that's, that's awesome. The, the earth just formed, wow. Um, and it's hollow, the earth is hollow. And it just formed hollow. Mm, that's that's amazing. Um, so it's the same deal. It's always it formed. So when you hear it formed and there's no actor, there's no action behind that, then you know that it, it, there could be nonsense um, afoot. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> See a few more, uh, a few more of these, if we can. Um, those are. Yeah, some beautiful photos of some of the stone spheres in Stone Spheres Park near Zavidivitsi. So they made this little bridge. Um, so the foundation's done a lot of great work. Um, and there's Samir with his dog, Sonny. And that's a different stone sphere, a smaller one. 
but but most of these are most of them are broken and Samir will go into why they're broken because why would they break all right let's look at Russia today's um, uh, video of the new this is a news report by Russia today it's just a it's just film of of what's happening so they, this is just Russia today giving us instead of giving us nonsense about how it's natural, they just filmed it. They filmed the guy excavating it. So this poor guy who's working for the foundation, he's the workhorse. And as usual, there's probably like 10 people standing around watching one guy work, you know. Um, he seems to be enjoying it though, that's good. You can see how big that thing is. That's why I call it the Megasphere. I wrote a really big article on it and Samir was really happy with the article. Um, he said it was the best one I'd written. I'd written probably 30 articles on ancient history by that time. And uh, so, and we're gonna go into detail about the entire story behind this particular, the, the, the hoopla the academic hoopla around this particular sphere. So this is Russia today. They came over and they're like, yeah, we'll fly over from Russia because this is important. This is cool. This is amazing, right? So Russia, Russia today did more than any other, than any, anybody else in America. So thanks Russia. Well done. All right, let's, let's check out the man himself, the discoverer of the Bosnian pyramids, right? There's somebody that's chatting. Let me just quickly do this. Um, there are many spheres in Costa Rica and Bosnia's second world for spheres. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going to get to the Costa Rican spheres, and there's so many. Uh, I, yeah, I think there's hundreds in Costa Rica. He, he's got the data, um, so we'll see exactly what he says about the numbers. And I think um, it's, I don't know if anybody's added up the number of spheres in Bosnia, but it's, it's really, it's a lot because there's so many different places where there are spheres in this little country of Bosnia. And by the way, Bosnia is only, it's, it's twice the size of Massachusetts. It's only 20,000 square miles. It's a really, really small uh, country. And yet there's, there's a lot of stone spheres in, in, in Bosnia. And as I mentioned, 80 stone spheres came out of one hill near Zvidovitsi. Uh, and that's where Semir made stone spheres park. So let's get to his video. We're just going to do this right now. I hope the audio is good. In the 1960s, in Mexico, there was a rumor that inside their stone vault there was a treasure, golden diamond. And Mexicans were building homes, putting dynamite. The didn't find the treasure in the first stone vault, but they continued. They destroyed the second one and the third one, over 80% of them. In 1960, here in Bosnia, there was a rumor that there is a treasure in those stone vaults. Bosnians are coming with hammers, destroying more than 90% of them. What you're going to see today, a lot of pieces. This here is just a piece. You can see nice surface, but two-thirds are missing. There are a couple more 
this range and you'll be able to explore it a little bit later. We are the first one who actually analyzed the sound. We took samples from four traces from the sound ball and one from the natural sound material. We did chemical and physical analysis. This is what we found out. Nine elements are exactly the same in the case of the sound ball and natural sound. And then one element only the natural stone has SeO2, SeO2, silicon The stone balls don't have it. They have two elements instead. One is manganese. No, 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 mangan. Mangan, not mangan. Mangan. Manganum. Mangan, we use today to uh, give the hardness to the material. And the second one is uh, calcium carbon, a binder. So, our conclusion the builders of the stone ball were using natural stone, then melted, adding the additives to get extreme hardness, and then pouring into the mold to get this spherical shape. Um. So I just want to make clear that I cut out all translators' translations. That's why it's copy. Because every phrase, literally, every five words, you know, she comes in with a French translation. There's also another translator translating into another language at the same time. So I cut out all that, at least as much as I could, just to get his stuff. So I'm sorry if it's choppy, but I just didn't want to take all your time. But I just want to be clear that what he just said is the key to everything. What he just said is the key, because it's the genius science. They took samples from the stone balls. Okay, I just want to make this super clear and just reiterate what he just said to make it to make sure that everybody gets um, this. Okay, he performed real science. He didn't just say things. He didn't just say things. That's what the orthodoxy does. They just say things. They're like, we have a we have a PhD and we're gonna just say things. We're not gonna perform science, even though we claim to be scientists, we're not going to do science when it comes to Bosnia. We're going to ignore Bosnia or we're going to attack Bosnia. That's it. They, they attack Bosnian archaeology or they ignore Bosnian archaeology. We're going to get to that in detail later. Um, and not just Bosnia, obviously, but whatever, whatever is going to help us understand who we are, that's what the orthodoxy attacks. And that it's, it's academia is the, the spear point. So what Semir did was he took samples from the stone balls four samples and he took a sample from the natural sandstone in the area, sent it to the lab. And what he found out was that the sandstone was different from the stone balls, even though the stone balls are essentially sandstone, because you, you would think that they would be the same thing. Oh, they carved it from a big block of sandstone. No, that's not what happened. What, they, what the ancients did, and this is a theory, but it seems to, it seems to make sense. So this is what Semir came up with. The natural sandstone has nine, sim nine elements that are the same in the stone balls. So the stone balls and the sandstone have nine identical elements. But the, the, the ancients took out the, the silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide, yeah. SiO2, I think that's silicon dioxide, right? They took that out. I don't know how they did that or why they did that, but they took that out and then they put in two things that weren't in the natural sandstone, okay? They put in um, manganese as a binder. Is that right? No, manganese as a hardener, calcium carbonate as um, for hardness. So they wanted to make, they wanted to glue it together really strongly and make it hard so it was durable, presumably. This is the theory. So that's the science that he did that no mainstream article mentions, not one, because I've read them, I've read them all. No academic mentions this. No um, pseudo academic uh, paper or magazine mentions this. Forbes is the first thing you come to when you do a search for Bosnian stone spheres. And they've got this, this kid just saying things, getting all the facts wrong and not, never mentioning any science that Samir did. 
and then just dismissing it and that's it. And it's like, have a nice day. Forbes, yay, we've got authority and we know what we're talking about. Well, you didn't engage the science. Nobody engages the science. The only one who did any science was him. Let's continue. When they got dry, they got very hard and soft. So, we have stones here, so I'm going to stone ball. in uh, Sweden, 150 kilometers to the west from Stockholm, base called Anunshaw. Two megalithic circles with erected monoliths and two stone balls in the middle of the circle. I came to the site with the president of Swedish Dowsing Association, Eva Sensen. So Eva told me, before you enter the circle, let me measure your order. It's enough, you can even measure the oil. So she was measuring, she said it's about one and a half meters. She said, this is good. Now enter the circle and climb the stone ball, which I did. Then she was measuring one meter, two meters, five meters, 15 meters. Mother Teresa had an aura of 18 meters. And I told Eva, Eva, wait another minute. My aura will be 150. That's how I felt. Like I was filled with the energy, radiating out. Okay, she said. Now, climb the cumulus. In front of this megalithic circle, there was a cumulus, conically shaped artificial hill, 14 meters high. So I climbed it. And then she put the metal keys under my feet. <laughs> so she put the keys under my uh, feet, and then she was measuring the energy flow going through my chakra. Why metal gets the energy flow? So, we have seven chakras in our physical body, probably 13 in our, together with our spiritual. So I know from before that my fourth chakra, the heart, love, sharing, is mostly widely open in my case. But then she came to my seventh chakra, the crown chakra, she said, it's wide open. It looks like the energy flows through you with no obstacle. Then I realized, stone ball, you expand your aura, cumulus, megalith, energy flow, moon, chakras wide open. So all these megalithic sites, Stonehenge, Karnak, Anonsha, pyramids, all over the planet, where about the energy? Always located above powerful energy point. So one of the purposes to expand our aura, our aura with the bigger energy field, yeah. better protection, health. But even more important, bigger aura, you start developing your spiritual sense. Thoughts, it's changing. It's telepathy. Bending the object with the power of the mind, telekinesis. Traveling through very powerful energy field, teleportation. Traveling to the past or the future, in other spiritual terms. Seeing other people's aura, seeing seven fields of aura, seeing different colors in aura, feeling information from aura, fixing other people's aura. So no more energy leak. You can do it with a touch or remotely. Spiritual and 30 of them. So, as you noticed, there's two things. One's a technical issue. The reason Samir is slightly out of focus this whole video is the creak is uh, loud. And I wanted to record Samir as loudly as I could, so I wanted to get close to him. So I'm standing literally right next to him, keeping the video as close, video camera as close as I can to his face. <laughs> so he's a little out of focus because it's a little too close for the camera to focus on him. But So that's why he's a little out of focus. Secondly, he noticed that he went from hardcore laboratory analysis science, right? That absolutely nobody in the orthodoxy or academia or the media or any, anybody has engaged. No one's had any answer to that. They just ignore it. So he, he's the hardcore scientist guy, then goes, you know what? Now that we've done this science, we go, 
what's next? What's the next step? And he goes on to some, what he calls spiritual science. I mean, but this isn't new to him. It might be new to a lot of other people, probably not to a lot of people in this audience, but that's a, that's a term that the orthodoxy would immediately slam and just say it's pseudoscience, it's spiritual science, that's just nonsense, and then they go on. They won't engage it. They won't go, well, let's, let's think about this. What, look, why did they build pyramids, megalithic sites around the world? Uh, we've got stone walls all around the world. Dorsen, uh, uh, Sux, Sux, how do you say it? Saksi Huaman. Uh, and, and people and the orthodoxy says that's uh, the remains of a fortress and it's like no it's a stone wall that's what it was and that's what it always was why are they building stone walls well on certain energy points they, they want to amplify it maybe they want to amplify the energy and mitigate the energy so he what he's saying is it's all about energy it's not about building tombs for kings it's not about fortresses to protect yourself from an invader it's about the energy of the earth tapping into it and Goran Marjanovic, who's uh, a Serbian electrical engineer, has already come out to the pyramid complex many times in Visoko and done a lot of work uh, with energy uh, readings and check out my articles, The Scalar Conundrum, which is two, uh, two article series that's in their interviews with Goran Marjanovic, amazing, because he talks about the beam that's coming out of the top of the pyramid of the sun. So <clears throat> pyramids and energy machines, which is what Christopher Dunn proposed over 20 years ago, um, is the key. And then you go, oh, it's not just pyramids as energy machines. So Semir is saying it's, it's the, any megalithic site. It's the stone balls, stone spheres all around the world, right? Um, and so then he goes, what, are the, what is this energy for? Well, he goes, well, one thing it's for is for your health. It expands your aura. So it increases your health, your ability to defend yourself because your aura is a strong shield. So let's continue. Once we give our potential fully utilized, we become one with the God, with the creation. So why would we need the political elite or religious to make the decisions instead of to finally with the spiritual sense? We have opportunity to become free beings. Stone balls on Easter Island. So that's pretty cool, right? It's the only one that I saw which is still active. You put the compass on top of it, the needle goes around. Stone balls in New Zealand, southwestern Egypt, Antarctica, as a witness of lost civilization from over one. So that is, that's the, uh, that's Semir. And he, he does that tour every year. He might do it more than once a year if he's if he's there. Usually he's out speaking. Uh, but uh, now we're going to get to the so that's the science, right? So we've been given not just hardcore, you know, conventional science, laboratory science, right? That anybody could could say is is legit. You know, these this element, uh, silicon dioxide, was replaced. This not from the natural sandstone. This element was replaced in these stone balls with manganese, uh, which was the hardener, and calcium carbonate, which was the binder. I'm pretty sure I got those right. So I mean, that's just a scientific fact that he discovered because he decided to take some samples instead of just guessing and talking and being glib like the orthodoxy does. You know, instead of just saying things, he did some he did some laboratory analysis. Well done, sir. It's expensive. He spent the money. It's his money and it's tourist money. You know, he's not being funded by billionaires like the, like the orthodoxy is, okay? Um, so then the orthodoxy comes in and says, we're going to have to ignore that. We're just going to have to ignore the fact that there is science and we're just going to just say things. Now, what is the, what is the just saying things uh, take the form of? What, is their, what does the orthodoxy do exactly? Well, here's a little article. All right. So I, so I found out about pyramids in my own country because I'm from uh, the U.S. And in Illinois, which is a state kind of in the middle, in the top, uh, there's, some, there's a step pyramid there. And it's part of a 
structure complex. Not all of them look like pyramids, and a lot of them have been destroyed. So many look like mounds, but they're huge, 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 huge. And the orthodoxy says, oh, tribes built them, Indian tribes, really? And the way they, the way they tell us that that's true is that they found arrowheads and pottery uh, between them. You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it just, it's, just, it's just such a load of nonsense that the idea that you would say that tribes built these massive structures, these small little tribes that were primitive people, um, primitive on the technological level, not primitive on the spiritual level, but um, they didn't have the manpower to build anything like one of these, much less 200 of them. Um, and th there's just no, there's just no way that uh, you can you can prove that these were built by tribes just because you found some arrowheads there. It's like saying that um, modern man built them because you found some McDonald's wrappers uh, between a couple of those structures. It doesn't make any sense. It's just nonsense. But that's that's what they that's what they give you if you if you want a degree in uh, in archaeology. That's what they'll tell you. And they'll go, thanks for paying us the money for telling you this nonsense because we're the experts and, you know, shut up and, and take the test and, and tell me what I said on the test, okay? And you'll get an A. Yeah, it was made by tribes. Oh, okay. So Simmer Osman, I guess, turned me on to and turned a lot of people on to the fact that this is real. These are real ancient structures in the middle of America. Now, how does the orthodoxy deal with these ancient structures? Well, they put a cement pad on the top of it and made it a little tourist des destination. A couple rows next to it. Oh, it's just a mound. They don't call it a pyramid. It's obviously a step pyramid. <laughs> they call it a mound. Well, that's not a mound. So this is known as Monk's Mound, okay? Now let's go to the next one. Here's, here's, uh, here's my little uh, list of uh, ways that the orthodoxy wants to destroy the truth about our past. Number one, here's the seven deadly sins, ready? The sin of omission, consciously omitting key information that might undermine one's position. That's, that's, that's key. That's the, that's the key to it all. They don't engage. They didn't engage Samir's science on the Bosnian stone spheres. They had to omit his science. Otherwise, they, had, they have no position. So they just ignore it. The sin of self-projection, projection, unconsciously projecting one's flaws, egotism, small-mindedness, laziness onto peoples of the past. So uh, uh, number three, the sin of self-importance believing that a scientific position is true because one holds it. That's pretty much 99% of the professors in anthropology, uh, in the universities, anthropology, archeology, span geology, um, they're just arrogant, period. Now there's a few people who aren't, and some of those are coming around, and that's good. And uh, Julie Ryder knows one of them, and he's up there checking out the Mo Montana megaliths with her, and he's pretty awesome. So little by little, a few people are coming out of academia to, to, to actually look at the world, you know, instead of memorizing names of minerals uh, in their classes. The sin of superficiality is number four, reaching scientific conclusions without properly engaging scientific data. Uh, five, the sin of distraction, introducing an argument that is irrelevant to the argument at hand. Um, now that's kind of like the, the, what they do with uh, when they talk about how Semir is, uh, you know, with the Bosnian pyramids, more than the stone spheres, but he, they say that Semir is a huckster trying to bring tourist money to war-torn Bosnia. And it's like, that's a red herring. Why don't you just look at the science, you know? Instead of trying to do a character assassination, I should, I should add number eight as a character assassina assassination as a specific thing, because that's what they did to him. And still on Wikipedia, it's not called Bosnian pyramids, it's called Bosnian pyramid claims, and all it does is attack Samir's character. I mean, it's unbelievable. Because he's a real scientist, and they, and they pretend that, that, that he's a huckster. It's just shocking. It's just shocking. He, and I, I tried to change Wikipedia, so many people have tried to change that ad, I, tried, I wrote a page for Wikipedia, it took me three months to, to, to do all the research. They dismissed it in 10 minutes. Uh, thanks a lot, Wikipedia. Uh, six, the sin of int intimidation, threatening those with whom one disagrees. Okay, Anthony Harding uh, and the European Association of Archaeologists threatened um, the Semir, his foundation, and the, uh, the state of Bosnia, the country of Bosnia, and they said, uh, you know, we're going to come down hard on you. We're going to sue the foundation. Um, uh, and uh, so 
it's just it's just an endless barrage of attacks. Um, Semir weathered it. Most men, most women would not. Uh, seven, the sin of silence, avoidance of reasonable discussion. So the, the orthodoxy began with all these attacks, right? Now they're basically in, this, in, this, in number seven, the sin of silence. Because uh, there's so much evidence now that, that, the, that the Bosnian pyramids are real. Well, we knew they were real since 2007. So there was no doubt about it since 2007. So it's been 12 years. Took a while for the orthodoxy to stop attacking, but they finally did in, uh, I think it was 2008. 2000, end of 2008, I think they stopped attacking and they just became silent because they knew that they would just make themselves look like idiots if they, if they engaged this, this at all. So let's go to the next thing. We'll just do a little, this is the orthodoxy, right? We're, we're, just, we're just going on Google just to see what's happening, right? Bosnian stone spheres. All right. Forbes. Okay, that's our first, that's our first uh, thing. Wow, Forbes came in and let us know all about Bosnia. Oh, let's see what Forbes has to say. Okay, well, Shana Montanari says that massive stone sphere in Bosnia is probably not from a lost civilization. Shana said so when she works for Forbes, so obviously she knows what she's talking about because Forbes is a respected publication, right? Um, it's likely just a geologic formation called a concretion. Okay, well, let, let's go on to see what, what, what information she has. All right, um, although the giant rock sphere appears man-made to the untrained eye, this monolith is likely not any specific sign of a lost civilization. Uh, Samir Osmanagic says a three meter wide stone ball found in the Visoko Valley. Well, that's not true. It's not found in the Visoko Valley. As you remember from the map we first saw, it's found uh, many, 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 many kilometers north, uh, but mostly west of there. So she's got her facts wrong, so she didn't do any research, period. Was made by an unknown civilization that used to live in the area but there are many reasons to cast doubt on this outlandish claim. See, that kind of language is not scientific language. She, she writes science, but she's saying outlandish. Um, you, can't, you can't say that. You can't say that. That's not a scientific rebuttal. You're not engaging the science if you're, if you're doing character assassination. That's what that word is. It is precisely the description that the brown and red color of the ball point to a very high content of iron that leads experts to believe, okay, and she, she, obviously she'd want to hyperlink that, you know, experts that lead experts to believe, hyperlink. Oh, we don't have a hyperlink, okay. So we don't really know what experts believe that, that this is naturally occurring spherical rock called a concretion. Many concretions are iron rich. Wow, many concretions uh, should also be hyperlinked, but I guess she didn't bother to do that either. So they take on a reddish appearance. Let's go to the next one. Now, if you're a geologist, blah, 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 they are often formed in bizarre, lumpy, or spherical shapes. Now, this is an odd way to talk about the stone spheres, right? Because she's using the word bizarre to talk about spherical as well as lumpy. And she's, because the, the stone spheres are, in general, 99% of the spheres found, found around the world are not lumpy. They're spherical. <laughs> But she wants to put bizarre and lumpy with the word spherical so that you think that there's, that they're just these weird shapes that aren't really round, but we call them spherical. So that she's doing that. Okay, that's, that's not scientific. And there's no hyperlink. There's no data. There's no, there's no reference. There's just nothing. It's just her just saying things. This is Forbes. This is the first link you get on Google. The first for Bosnian stone spheres. That's what Google wants you to read. This girl... <laughs> we're going to get to her later, who, who tells us things that she's just saying, okay? In a wide variety of sizes by completely natural methods, but the exact circumstances are still relatively unknown. Okay, so she's saying that science doesn't really know how they're naturally formed, right? But we know they are naturally formed, we just don't really know how. But, but believe us, they are natural because, just because, okay? I said so, I work for Forbes, okay? They occur, wait, they occur. What's the actor? What's the action that's making them occur? 
when very small mineral particles glue together. Wow, they glue together. Wow, that's cool. Naturally glue together. Oh, you didn't tell us how they glue together. There's no hyperlink and no reference and no scientist and nothing. It's just, they just glue together all over the world. It's wonderful. Stone spheres are just gluing together like ghosts just running around gluing things together. Yay! This should be called the ghosts of Bosnia that, that are just gluing stone spheres together to, to form a type of cement between larger grains of sand or dirt. Hey, she's sounding scientific. Larger grains. Wow, that's kind of scientific. Concretions are often harder than the surrounding rock they form in. Often. Likely. Often. You'll see these words seems. Robert Schock loves the word seems. This seems to be, he never, he doesn't give you the information. He just says it seems. And it's like, well, you got a PhD. So I guess, I guess what you're saying is true, even though it just seems. No need to give us the research or the data or the numbers. Just say it seems and we'll believe you because you're from Yale and you got a PhD. That's awesome. Concretions are often harder, blah, blah, blah. They will, and so over thousands and millions of years. Shana, that's amazing. Not just thousands of years, but millions of years too. What? That's scientific, right? Over thousands and millions of years. Not just millions of years, not just thousands, but thousands and millions. Well, that's, that's millions plus thousands. That's amazing. They will be the only part of the rock formation that remains and end up in quite striking, quite, quite likely, often seems, see that kind of language, you know it's nonsense. Quite striking patterns and shapes. Aw, that's so wonderful that you've done your research so well. Thanks for the hyperlinks. Oh wait, there aren't any. Thanks for the research. Oh wait, you didn't do any. There are many examples of spherical concretions like the one found in Bosnia from around the world. Spherical concretions. Okay, so you've already made your conclusion without any data, no hyperlinks, no research, no scientists, no, no numbers, nothing, just you saying things and you say, they are spherical concretions. Thanks, Shana. That's awesome. Well, you work for Forbes. Well, it must be true. The more rocky boulders of New Zealand. Now they call them boulders. They're spheres. They're not boulders. <laughs> it's like calling the monk's uh, step pyramid a, a mound. Okay, thanks, orthodoxy. That, that, that's awesome. You guys are amazing. The Moraki boulders of New Zealand are an example of cannonball concretions. Okay, thanks for the hyperlink. Thanks for the research. Thanks for the data. Thanks for the numbers. Thanks for the scientists that, that told us that. Well, let's, let's check them all out. Oh, we can't because you didn't hyperlink it. Okay. These famous very spherical boulders, well, thanks a lot, are found on a beach. They are part of a blah, blah, blah. Okay, now let's keep going. Let's go to the next series of nonsense. Ready? Let's, let's find out who this, this woman Shana is. Okay? This we don't need. Let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, before we get to Shana, we're just going to go quickly to the second link when you do the google search the next link is for geology page and you're like geology page that sounds uh, or that sounds like pretty legitimate although geology.com would be better but this is geologypage.com and you're like well it still sounds pretty legit geology page i mean somebody went to the trouble of creating a page called geology page great i'm sure they're legit i'm sure they're awesome so here we go into the orthodoxy's nonsense oh okay my slideshow has just been somehow, let's see what this one is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh-oh. Can we, let me just make sure I have this right. Is this going to be, no, it's still not. Let me just see. Oh. Okay, take a water break and uh, let me just figure out where my, we don't really have to get to those either. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, follow me on Twitter. Okay, let's just go to Shana because I can't figure out this, the order of those. This is her at the uh, bottom of her uh, article that she wrote for Forbes, the uh, authoritative magazine on economics. And she's a science writer. 
she says, I'm a paleontologist and science communicator. Okay, science communicator is meaningless, so let's say, but I am a paleontologist, that's real, okay? So she studied paleontology, that's awesome, that's, that's bones, that's not stones, but close enough, right? I received my PhD from the Richard Gilder Graduate School of the American Museum of Natural History. Follow me on Twitter, okay. Let's go to the Richard Gilder Graduate School. Let's, let's find out about that. Richard Gilder Graduate School. Okay, Yale. Wow, it's, it's Yale, huh, that keeps popping up. Robert Schock's from Yale. So now you got Robert Schock and Shana, both saying, both just saying things, not performing science, but just saying things. And they're both from Yale. Well, that's probably just a coincidence. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Let's go to the next one. All right, here's some, uh, here's some folks from uh, that school. And we, I'm sure we can trust these people to talk about, you know, let's see what kind of uh, geology and archeology span these people are doing at this school. All right. Let's see, physical sciences, uh, coral geochemistry. So she's studying corals and ocean atmosphere. And well, that's not really rocks and geology, but that's okay. I'm sure somebody there, I'm sure they have some kind of rock, stones and rocks and geology and archaeology happening there, right? Let's check this out. Fossil record for hominids, apes, and humans. Well, that's not quite, that's not, it has nothing to do with, with stone spheres, huh? Weird. Oh, and all these uh, science teachers received their diploma under a blue whale. That's news at that school. Isn't it wonderful? Nothing to do with geology or archaeology, though, because it's a paleontology, biology, oceanography school. Here's some more profiles. I'm sure some of these people have something to do with archaeology and geology at the school that Shana went to to tell us that she has the authority to tell us all about the Bosnian stone spheres. Let's find out all about the geology and the archeology span that these people are masters in. Genetic evidence for eight previously unrecognized species of iguanas. Oh, okay, well, that's not quite up the right tree there. And speaking of trees, a tree of life for malaria parasites. Well, that's not quite geology or archeology span either. Fossil and modern beetles, tar pits. Sounds more like paleontology. Yeah. So that's the school that Shana went to, right? And there's Shana, paleontologist and a science communicator. And we can trust her because she works for Forbes, right? So let's see what's happening. Let's go check out Shana. Now remember, this is the first link you get on Google. I'm following Shana, okay? This is, good. This is Shana. She likes sports. She really likes sports. That's, that's for sure. Hey, look, she's with science. Super cool photo. She doesn't give us any science, but there's a photo of science. It's kind of like just saying things. You say, well, I'm a scientist, and then you just say things. Uh, more sports, cool shot of a basketball that's colored, right? It's orange, and the rest of it's black and white. Cool. Here's a guy in front of a net. A lot of people applauding him, a sports figure. I mean, sports is good too, right? You got to have Got of idols, I guess. There she is, Shana. That's our woman. That's the expert on uh, for Forbes. And by the way, if you click on the article on Forbes and you click on her name, it says uh, we are not uh, responsible for the opinions of any of our journalists. It's like, yeah, you do want to protect yourself from her. Okay. So that was our friendly neighborhood orthodoxical mouthpiece. Let's get to the Megasphere's find findings, all right? Let's hope I'm a little more organized in this slideshow. Let's see what's happening. Yeah, so I just posted this today. Um, I got a little comment in chat. Well, I don't want to say little. It's not a little comment. Let's find out. Uh, I've just received my PhD. I know that any statement made needs to be backed up by peer. Yes, Forbes is one of the front runners of fake news. Uh, I have to agree with you. And uh, just between you, me, and everybody else listening, uh, the bankers control Forbes 100% and nothing Forbes says is without spin, distortion, or falsity. One of those. So, so the headlines spun or so it's, it's, there's always going to be some deception in every single article written by Forbes, written for Forbes. Um, and it doesn't mean that the people writing 
are trying to deceive you. It just means that Forbes hires people who don't know what's going on purposely. Okay. Uh, the excellent, detailed, and exhaustive science of Dr. Sam Osmanagic, PhD, stands in stark contrast. So his science is in stark contrast to the glib pronouncements of the arche archaeological orthodoxy, among whose ranks on the subject of Bosnian archaeology, we must presently include Robert Schock, Graham Hancock, Zahi Hawass, Anthony Harding, and more. And Anthony Harding was the main guy in the very beginning from the European Association of Archaeologists who spearheaded this incredible attack on the Bosnian pyramids to get it shut down. He wanted it shut down, period. He wanted it done. And he, he, he went all out. I mean, he had petitions, he, lawsuits, everything. And he, he came hard with, with all, the, all the ammunition of the orthodoxy, all the power of his position, and he failed. Why? Because, because Semir Osmanagic didn't, didn't let him win, period. That's why. Um, Robert Schock, of course, joined the, joined the crew. Um, he calls himself alternative archaeologist. Uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know. He seems to be stumping for the orthodoxy on, on the key issues. So whatever he wants to call himself, that's fine. People say he's a great guy. Awesome. I know Graham's a great guy. I met him. Met him in Bosnia. Unfortunately, it was, it was on the third day of his visit, or the fourth day, he had been given a tour. Graham Hancock had been given a tour by Semir and his wife um, of the Bosnian Pyramid Complex, a personal tour. Beautiful tour, you know, personal. That's pretty amazing. Nobody gets a personal tour from Semir Osman. I guess, well, Graham got one. Graham and his wife got one from Semir and his wife. So the four of them went off, had a great time looking at pyramids. And guess who got to f photograph and videotape it? Nobody. He, pr he prohibited, Graham Hancock prohibited photography and videography of his visit to the Bosnian Pyramid Complex. Now, I was the official videographer for the foundation at that time. So I'm the one who was denied the ability to photograph him looking at the Bosnian pyramids, to photograph him looking at concrete, get an over shoulder shot of Graham Hancock looking at stuff. That was what I wanted, right? To show that he was there, to show what he was seeing. Because what happened was he then memory hold his trip, except for one talk in Denver in 2015 and uh earth keepers has that on their youtube channel one word earth keepers and uh they have that talk he went about over a lot of different things not just the bosnian pyramids lots of different things that he was looking at so he only had a short time to look at bosnia that's okay uh, it's fine but what he did was he took one slide of this jumbled concrete on the pyramid of the sun that had been dynamited by gypsies so that's why it was jumbled so it had been severely tortured by explosions. And then he said, well, this is just natural concrete. This looks like natural concrete. He said, it looks like pudding stone. That was his quote. And then he ended up saying another quote from Graham Hancock is, not everything that looks like a pyramid is a pyramid. So that, that's his assessment of the Bosnian pyramids after three days there. That was his, that was his photo. He didn't show anything else. <laughs> His wife took photos. She, she was able to take photos. I asked her for the photos. It was really nice. I, I sent her, I, I was her Facebook friend. I sent her a, a little message saying it was great to meet you guys. You guys are angels, which is true. They're in person. They're just absolute angels. They've got angelic en energy. I love, I love both of them. And I love Graham Hancock's work. I respect his work very, high, very highly. I always recommend his books, Fingerprints for the Gods, Underworld. The two best books I've re read, the two most important books I've read. I told him that. I said, those are the two most important books I've read. And he was really happy to hear that. You know, this is after his, his trip. And we we're down by the Foynitsa River in Bosnia. And, and, and Samir said, can I have Jock, you know, videotape you making a statement now that you've seen everything, you know, for three days, would you make a, a statement, you know, just a, just a minute or whatever you want to do about your visit here? What are your conclusions? You know, what are your preliminary conclusions? And, and Graham said, no, I, I, I can't control the uh, release of that statement. So I'm not going to do that right now. He's very polite and I was super disappointed because not only could I not photograph him or videotape Graham at the complex, which is completely anti-scientific. Of course, you'd want to have somebody's photographing you, you know, or at least release your own photos. Well, where are his wife's photos? Well, I asked his wife for the photos 
in the most polite way possible. And I said, the, your photos are, I'm sure, are really good because will be very helpful because you're a professional photographer. I, I was just, a, I'm a writer. So my photographs are just, well, I got the best camera I can. I just do the best I can. She's a professional photographer taking photos of the pyramids, all the features of the complex, the tunnels, everything, megaliths. She's taking her professional photos and I was like really excited to see those. You know, I said, your photos, I was talking to his wife on Facebook, I said, your photos will be uh, really important in either supporting or not supporting the Bosnian pyramids hypothesis. In other words, I put it in the most diplomatic way possible. I was super nice because I have no reason not to be nice. You know, science, you can be nice to each other, be nice, okay? Let's, let's all talk about science. We're talking about a hypothesis, the Bosnian pyramids hypothesis. Your photos will be important, I said. So I, I can't wait to see them. Graham wrote to Semir, so Santa, his wife, defriended me. I'm not sure if Graham told her to or she did or whatever. So I wrote asking for the photos, nicest way possible. She defriended me on Facebook and Graham wrote to Semir and almost got me fired. He said that I was harassing his wife. Graham Hancock, my friends, said that I was harassing his wife. I'm a professional videographer and photographer, right? I'm working for the foundation for money, for a salary. I'm taking photos professionally with a professional camera and working as hard as I can to get the real information out there. I'm a professional videographer and photographer asking another professional photographer to see the photos because they're going to be important. He said I was harassing his wife and he almost got me fired. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how shocking that was to me? Wow. Wow. I mean, that, that's, that's just, so, so then you go, how far do the tentacles of the orthodoxy reach if, if Graham Hancock is doing that? Who got to him? You know? I'm not going to make any claims or accusations about specifics. I'm just saying that the evidence is there, right? The evidence is there. And then you go, what's happening? Because he's acting scientifically until he gets to the Bosnian pyramids. Graham Hancock acts scientifically, writes scientifically, researches scientifically, speaks scientifically until one subject. And you can quote me, the Bosnian pyramids. Why? Why is that? I will always promote Graham's work, but these are the facts of the case, okay? I'm just giving you my passionate view on this. This is super important because the orthodoxy is strong and it's coming for all of us, all of our knowledge, all of our real knowledge, and it wants to bury and suppress it, bury and suppress it, bury and suppress it, push it aside, sin of omission. Let's go forward, boom. Let's go to the next image. Okay, so I wrote an article on the megasphere. Now I could have written an article on all the spheres, but the megasphere is the, is the, is the crown jewel right? The, 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 the biggest stone sphere, not just in Bosnia, but in the world, you know, the most massive, because it is super, super heavy, because it does have a high iron content. So uh, now this talk is getting a little long, and I, I wanted to uh, be further along. So we're just going to zip through this, okay? This is the whole, I'm just going to give you most of the screen grabs from the whole article. So Archaeology Magazine has an 11 year moratorium in 2018. So now it's, now it's 12 and a half year moratorium on Bosnian archaeology. They don't talk about it. Can you imagine that? They don't talk about Bosnian archaeology except to totally destroy um, Back in 2006, 2007, they just said, no, he's a huckster. Samir is just trying to get tourist money. And it's, he's, he's just this crazy, crazy guy. That was, that was, that was Archaeology Magazine. So they did character assassination. A scientific pub publication, scientific in quotes, because we're going to find out they're not so scientific. Let's go to the next one. All right. <clears throat> Instead of talking about the, the megasphere that was found by Dr. Sam Osmanagic in, in uh, Zvidovitsi, Here's what they did. They published 
a story about a quilter who was murdered in 1826, a quilter. This is Archaeology Magazine. This is the most respected, prestigious magazine in archaeology in the world. So instead of doing a Bosnian stone spheres, they, they did a, a, a 1826, a quilter. He was murdered. That was the story. Okay, what else did they do? What else did they do? We're going to get to what else, what else they did. First, we're going to see that the major media at least mentioned the megasphere, right? Those are all the dates, because I actually do research, unlike, unlike the orthodoxy who wants to just push everything aside and just say things, right? So here's the dates, here's the articles, here's the hyperlinks. Everything's hyperlinked. Because science is important, because we have to figure out who we are, right? So that's the major media coverage. Pretty amazing, right? 2016. Everybody came on and said, hey, check this out. Well, they can get, they can get more subscribers, more ratings, whatever, more subscribers with these sensational articles. Wow, big sphere. And then they go, well, but it's just natural. But they put the photo up so they can get some, some views. So the editors of Archaeology Magazine completely ignored the Megasphere's discovery, making no mention of the find in their print publication, in their online publication, and on their Facebook page. Now, hold on one second. I got to go get my, my power cord. Just hold on one second. It's happened before. I don't know if this happened again. Okay, let's see what I All right. All right, that's good. Okay, and then. Okay. All righty. So I just had to plug in the, because it was, my battery was gone. So here we go. So we got energy. So. They didn't, Archaeology Magazine did not publish anything about the Megasphere in any of their platforms. Let's go to the next slide. Instead, they ran two balls topic stories. These are the two little balls that they wanted to talk about instead of the Megasphere. Let's just pause a moment to reflect on that. Okay. Two looted Roman sling stones were anonymously returned to an Israeli museum. It's just so, it's like sling stones. Okay, maybe they are. Great. And you're not going to engage the megasphere because it's Bosnia. For some reason, okay? Some reason. Hmm. Let's go to the next one. Boom. Here's the second story. Micro story about micro balls. Musket balls. Wow. They might be from some of the first shots fired in the Battle of Waterloo. Wow! Uh, how about some Bosnian archaeology? Archaeology magazine? Nope. We're not doing that. We're not going to tell you why. We're just not going to engage. Period. So that's archaeology magazine, right? Let's check chat really quick. I just want to make sure that everybody's happy. Oh, I like that. I'll keep going. You know, thanks for saying that. I'll talk as long as I want. Is it, you said talk as long as you want, brother. Thanks, Brad Smith. You kind of hard to shut me up, as you've noticed, because I'll tell you, just yesterday I was out shopping at the health food store and I said, uh, while you were fishing out in the ocean, he loves the fish, the owner of the store, the Bosnian pyramids are waiting for you to go visit him. And I started talking about the Bosnian pyramids because I was wearing the shirt 
you know? And he's looking at me like, when is he going to shut up? Because I got things to do. And I was like, I'm just going to keep talking, man, because I want you to know about the Bosnian pyramids because it's been, it's been suppressed. If it hadn't been suppressed, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. I'd just go do something else. But if they're suppressing this so hard, they're just really clamping down on it. Graham Hancock comes on board to suppress it. Walter Cruttenton, who is otherwise genius, is friends with Robert Schock. And Robert Schock told him, and Walter told me this, so I know it's true. So Walter said, Robert told me there's no pyramids in Bosnia, so I'm not going to look at any of your stuff. And I was like, yeah, but you really should look at my stuff because you should look at some stuff about the Bosnian pyramids. Don't just listen to Robert Schock. You know, friend. So Walter Cruttenton is a real scientist. Robert Schock has his ear. He's like, Schock's like the Iago, you know. He's like whispering in people's ears, and it's like really bad. Really, really, really bad for science and for humanity. It's just really, really bad. And everyone says, Robert Schock's a great guy. Great, let's have a beer. Stop whispering in people's ears about the Bosnian pyramids. Okay, and guys, look, I'm going out on a limb. I don't care. Look, what's at stake is, is, our, is, is our understanding of who we are and our understanding of the general past on earth because the, the general past on earth was a mosh pit of civilizations, okay? That came here and left their mark, destroyed, built, did all sorts of things, terraformed. The whole earth is terraformed, man. So, so we have to get to it. We can't just mess around anymore, you know? And it's not about personalities, even though I keep talking and using the names. It's like, it's, it's the, the problem is not the personalities. It's the, the, and it, we sh our focus should really be on the information. It's just that we keep having to engage the orthodoxy's nonsense because they keep attacking, you know? So we have to engage it. And it's like, we have to push aside their nonsense so we can get to the science, you know? It's so simple just to do science. And that's what Samir keeps saying. He says, don't engage, don't fight. Just keep, we're gonna keep doing science. I'm like, okay, yeah but I kind of do want to engage. So while he's doing the science, I kind of want to make sure that people understand that these attacks are baseless. That's all I want to do. I just want to defend. And I have a video called A Defense of Science. So go find that video. If you do nothing else, go find A Defense of Science on YouTube, okay? All right. So we saw that video, right? That's awesome. Some of the broken stone spheres. See what happened, the reason the stone spheres are broken is because in Mexico there had been found uh, many stone spheres and, and the Mexicans decided that there was a rumor around that there was gold and diamonds inside the stone spheres. No one had ever found gold and diamonds, but this rumor started to circulate. So the Mexicans started breaking up the stone spheres. They would drill in, put in dynamite and then blow them apart and go, well, there's no golden diamonds in this one. Let's try the next one. And they just blew up all their stone spheres. And then the Bosnians heard about this and they said, let's do that too, because there might be golden diamonds in our stone spheres. And you know, we got no money. What if we could find some gold? It'd be amazing. Wow. So they drilled in or they just came with hammers. So Samir said they just came with hammers and started hammering on these really, really, really hard formed, you know, consciously hard, objects made to withstand anything and the boss just like we're just going to hammer them and they just came and just hammered them until they came apart so that's why they're broken you know now they couldn't break all of them because some of them were still buried in clay like the megasphere so thank goodness uh, hopefully no one's going to come and start hammering on that once you know in the middle of the night so there's a few smaller spheres that are still intact most of them are broken. And then as Samir had said, 40 of the 80 that came out of the hill in that one rainstorm back in the, I think it was the thirties, he said, 40 went to the sea. So we don't even know where those are. 40 stayed and most of those are broken up by treasure hunters, okay? That's, that's in Bosnia, that's in, just in the Zvidovici. And in Bosnia all around, there's, the, there's different stone sphere compositions. There's lava stone spheres uh, in different areas in, in, in the small country of Bosnia. There's granite stone spheres too. These are the sandstone ones, but, but to call them sandstone is, 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 as we've discussed, kind of a misnomer because the sandstone, the real natural sandstone is a slightly different composition than these. So they took the natural sandstone is the theory and then they melted it, took out the silicon dioxide, 
put in the manganese and the calcium carbonate and made these incredible, super strong, durable spheres. For what reason? Well, Samir talked about the possibilities, the energetic possibilities, what he calls the spiritual science. So, so they weren't carved, they were molded. There's another one, that's the one he likes to stand by and talk. So there's the, there's the science, because I've been talking about the, the elements, but I just want to make sure, yeah, silicon dioxide. So nine elements are the same in the case of the stone balls and natural stone. One element, the natural stone has silicon dioxide. The stone balls don't have it. They have two elements instead. One is manganese. Manganese was used to give hardness. Second is calcium carbonate, a binder. And the orthodoxy is like, are you doing science? Okay, we're just going to say things. Blah, blah, blah. So, so that's, the, that's the conclusion. So that's science. What a concept. Science in Bosnia? Wow. And what's this? Oh my goodness. Could it be we have laboratory chemical analysis confirmed? It's not just us talking about an analysis, but we have an actual certificate. What a concept. Here's that certificate. So this is proof. This isn't just Shana talking. Shana for Forbes magazine, the first link you come to when you search for Bosnia Stone Spheres. This isn't Shana just saying things. This is a certificate from a scientific institute. And that's the, that's the second part of it. And that gives you the, the data. They analyzed it. Nice. Here's the data. Screen grab that because I'm not gonna keep it up for, for very long because math hurts my brain. So we got 37.33 metric tons, super, super, super heavy sphere, right? The megasphere, lots of iron in there. That's why it's so heavy. We look at the weight of other ancient stone balls. The largest stone balls in Costa Rica reach a top weight of 16 tons. So about half. Aha, and then there's 35 tons volcanic stone balls. So let's see what, what 35 tons, 37 tons, okay. And then there's the question of whether it's metric tons or the other kind of tons. So it's a little confusing, but let's just say um, we got stone spheres all around the planet. We don't have to say the Bosnians are the biggest, it doesn't matter. What matters is what did, what did the ancients want to use them for? So if, if a giant alien spaceship were discovered buried in the, in the Shuma forest of Bosnia, would Archaeology Magazine cover the story? Probably not. Archaeology Magazine has had a bizarre and de-chilling moratorium on Bosnian archaeology, beginning a little more than one year after Do Dr. Samuels Magish discovered ancient pyramids in Bosnia. Could there be some ideological or other agenda on the part of Archaeology Magazine that we're not aware of? It's the, it's the other agenda that I'm worried about. All right, let's go. Oh yeah, a couple more. This is what I was mentioning before that in 2005, 2006, and I think there was one in 2007 too, that Archaeology Magazine didn't deny the possibility of existence of pyramids in Bosnia, right? And then from then on, didn't do any Bosnian archaeology. They simply didn't mention Bosnia, period. Nothing that happened in Bosnia existed as far as Archaeology Magazine was concerned. <clears throat> um, here are those articles, by the way, because I don't just say things. That's a screen grab of their dismissals of the Bosnian pyramids. See the pyramids in quotes there? Bosnian Atlantic connections, connection. It sounds incredible. They just, did, they just diss it, right? Pyramid scheme. It's just character assassination. And, and here are the rest of them. Right? Uh, so, that, so that's Google. That's our, uh, that's if you just type in Archaeology Magazine Bosnia, you get the same, the same list, Pyramid Scheme, Bosnia Atlantis. It's, so in other words, you get two ways of showing that that's the only thing that they did, 2006. They didn't do anything after 2006 or 2007. So this is, this is, I did this today. That's a screen grab from today. So there's no 2015, 2018, 2019, nothing from Archaeology Magazine for Bosnia, okay? Just 
2006, and then, then, then the sin of silence, right? So that's Google. Thanks a lot, Google. The only mention by archaeology after 2006 is a two-line mention of October 2008. Businessman Samir Osmanagic continues to dig up Visoko Bosnia. <laughs> It doesn't say perform excavation. It says dig up. Like he's destroying everything. He's just going in there with a shovel. And, ah, right? In search of pyramids, despite ridicule. Yeah, you're ridicule. Archaeology magazine. University of Sarajevo archaeologist Envir Imamovic likens Osm Osmanagic project to letting me perform surgery. So this is the kind of thing that Semir has to deal with, even from his own academic circle. You know, even from the, even from, he, he, he grew up in Sarajevo. And here's a, a professor in Sarajevo in archaeology saying that, 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 that Semir excavating the Bosnian pyramids is like him, Enver, performing surgery. In other words, the most ridiculous thing on the planet. Thanks a lot, Enver. Wow, what a sweet thing to say. Do you have any evidence to, that we could deal with instead of just doing a character assassination? Can you give us some hyperlinks, some data, some numbers, some research, some scientists who, who went there? No, because you didn't go there, right, Enver? No, you didn't. Okay. In seven years of Facebook postings, Archaeology Magazine has failed to mention Bosnia once. Sorry, we couldn't find any results for this search. Okay. Thanks, Archaeology Magazine. It cannot be asserted that archaeology magazine editors have not been aware of the continuous stream of scientific information emerging from the excavation of the Bosnian pyramid complex since mid-2005. On October 16, 2011, I emailed a detailed letter to the, letter to the editor of archaeology. So you can find that letter to the editor of archaeology magazine. You can find that, that whole letter. Uh, for 10 years, this was back, uh, so it's been 12 years or, or more now, archaeology magazine has ignored Bosnian pyramid science and all archaeological discoveries from the country of Bosnia. I mean, even if they're against the pyramids for whatever reason, this this magazine, this prestigious magazine, why are they against just any any Bosnian archaeology? No matter what happens in Bosnia, it's just like no, it must. It's the country that must not be named. Okay, thanks a lot. So let's see. And there's yeah. So that's 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 those slides. What else we got? Oh God, it just goes on and on. I don't know if you guys can hang in. Should I even go? Let me just do a couple of these because it's just so depressing, you know? Oh, I gotta show you this though. This is, this is pretty cool actually. If you guys can hang in there for, just, you find some cool stuff in this one. All right, petrology. Uh, the Costa Rican stone spheres turn out to be a real weapon that they use against the Bosnian stone spheres because they say that the Costa Rican stone spheres, which are acknowledged as, as artificial in the sense that they, they say that the tribes, the primitive tribes took stones and hammered these, this really, really, really hard rock into perfect spheres, you know, somehow. And you're like, and you're like, really, the primitive tribes made those beautiful, perfectly round, massively heavy, hundreds of them stone spheres. For some reason, nobody knows why. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and they're, they're made of something called gabbro. So, they, they, so the thing about the orthodoxy is they always have the shell game. So there's like all these different names for kind of the same thing. And they, they always sort of make a, like a, 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 there's the caveat. They're always like, well, it's, it's similar to this, but it's a bit of confusion about really what we meant by that because some scientist in the past named it this and then, that name went out of disuse, and then it's a little bit more like this. And so they're already admitting the confusion within their own ranks, but they just keep going naming things and go, as soon as you know the names, students, you know the names of all these minerals, you're going to get a degree. So you, you got to go into the university and go, i got to memorize all this, okay. And then you just, you just memorize all these names, and you're like, okay, I got my geology degree, what do I do now? And you've never been in the field. You went on one field trip to look at some stuff that, you know, someone had already found a long time ago. No one asked you to do original research in the field, right? That you don't need that for a degree. You just have to memorize the names of minerals. Just keep memorizing minerals and we'll throw some more names at you every, every five minutes that we'll just make up some more names for some other little small 
subcategory of some other mineral and a subcategory of that and a subcategory of that. And we'll just make up all the thousands of names and that'll be your degree. Isn't that wonderful? So Gabbro, it's a, and they'll just, you just endless nonsense uh, that's, that's meant to suppress the truth. Now, diabase is another name for this Gabbro, okay? I've been spending a whole day looking at this SHIT, okay? Diabase, and, and so I'm not gonna bore you with everything that I found out, which is nothing. It's just the hamster wheel of, of, of academic nonsense, okay? I kept following the trail that they would give us and it never led anywhere. I'm not gonna go make you go through that because I was gonna do that just for fun, but I'm not gonna make, it, make, you, make you do what I just did which is go on a hamster wheel for eight hours today. Diabase, oh, it's wonderful. And, but it does say it can be cut for headstones and memorials. And you're like, well, that's pretty hard material. And you're saying primitives, so memorial, something we, we use for memorial that's really hard, right? Is, is being pounded by primitives into a perfect sphere. That's their, that's their theory. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay, now it's basalt and diabase diorite, or sorry, sorry, dolerite, and later we'll find out that's also diorite. There it is, diorite, such as granite, diorite, and gabbro. So they're all kind of the same. Here's a bunch of names for you. Spend some time memorizing those students, and they're all kind of the same, but not really. So there's diabase. It's an igneous rock, and you're like, well, is it really igneous, though, or was it melted by the ancients? right? Because heating was used for these stones, but was that a carved naturally igneous substance? Or was it that they brought together the, 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 the ingredients, the ancients, the advanced people that came before us with the advanced beings, and they melted it together in their ingredient, they cooked it, this is a recipe, right? And they heated it and made it into stones and molded it. But they're telling, the Orthodox is telling us that primitives carved it with stone, just chipping away with stones at, at some big natural igneous rock. And you're like, really? That's your theory? Wow, that sounds insane. You people sound insane, okay? Um, <laughs> diabase is composed of, okay, that just came down. So don't even read that unless you want your brain to hurt. Don't read that, okay? It's just endless names that are going to try to confuse you. Uh, another famous French geologist preferred to use the term diorite. It was himself who decided to abandon the term in 1827. However, it has somehow managed to survive thanks to German scholars who continue to use it. In other words, they're saying there's confusion around diorite, diabase, dolerite, basalt, uh, and gabor. There's confusion around that. Thanks, we know there's confusion because I'm confused, okay? Now check it out though. Sheeted dikes in Cyprus are composed of dolerite, which is essentially the stuff that the Costa Rican stone spheres are made of, right? And remember, they're using the Costa Rican stone spheres against the Bosnian pyramids project, okay? They're, they're using those against the project. You'll see how, or you can find out how if you research it. So this stuff, by the way, this dolerite, as they call it, right, is the material that the hills in South Africa are made of. So I was there for a month and I made videos on the inclined, the inclined layers that are clearly artificial because they're all inclined into the hill where whatever face you're facing. So the hills are built out of this. Why did they build the hills in South Africa out of this? Because it's really, 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 really hard really, really, really durable, long-lasting. And you see the sheets, right? See the sheets and then you see the vertical faces, right? This is all artificial, this isn't natural. Because <laughs> you don't get vertical straight line seams in natural sedimentary material, right? Or an igneous material, impossible. So the, the orthodoxy has to ignore this face right here. Super smooth, vertical face, vertical face, vertical seam, not a fracture. Seams joined together, fractures join, uh, break apart. Seam, 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 vertical seam, vertical seam, all smooth faces, vertical. Now you can, of course, imagine that this could be sedimentary, this horizontal layer, right? That could be sedimentary. 
not the, not the vertical one. Though. So this is all artificial and it's diorite or dolerite or, you know, just the list of names goes on. So it's pretty interesting. So that's South Africa. I mean, that's not South Africa, but that's the same stuff as in South Africa above the riverbed of the Elands River, right by Michael Tellinger's compound. Pretty cool. And this is, this is the riverbed stuff because it's different from the hills. It suddenly changes. So this is the Elands River in South Africa. I mean, that's not this photo, but I'm just saying that this is exactly this, the deal as the same as in South Africa. This is Cyprus in this photo, but this is the stuff that the riverbed is made of, right? In, in the Elands River in South Africa, right by Michael Tellinger's compound, suddenly it changes to this, this uh, dolerite or diorite, as the orthodoxy wants to call it, uh, different names. Dolerite here in this, in this one. And that's so the hills are made of this and the riverbed's made of this. Interesting. Why isn't it all one thing? If it was just, if it was just natural, it would all just be one sort of amorphous thing. And, but no, suddenly the riverbed's a different uh, struck, uh, different uh, material in, in South Africa. So check out my uh, videos on South Africa, okay? So that's that bunch of crap. And I didn't even go through the, I'm not gonna put you through the rest of the slideshow, okay? Because it's just, it's just gonna piss you off. Hardness ratings, I'm not even gonna go into this because this really got my temperature boiling today because the orthodoxy has different lots of different hardness ratings different systems of rating the hardness of, of, of rocks and it's it's just and then they just go into like conversion from one hardness rating to another and how there's confusion they, they keep admitting how there's confusion and you're like wow why don't you guys get your act together you know um we just go by megapascals okay and I have a video that talks about megapascals. Just find, just search Jock Double A megapascals. I explain it all for you. Super hard for me because I don't have a mathematical mind that Samir and the, the other guys have. So, but I, I did it for all for you, babies. Okay, all for you, my little puppies. If you're hanging in, you're stalwart. Thank you for hanging in. I know it's long. I'm going to turn on the fan because my computer's starting to melt, like the uh, substance that they made the uh, stone spheres out of the ancients. Okay, now. Let's see what this slideshow is looking like. Let's see if we want to go through this and then we're going to get the last video and then we're done. And you can go back to your life. Like I said, if you hung in here, you're awesome. So here's the, so here's weird news it's called. So here's the Huff Post doing what it always does, which is damage control. <laughs> so if there's anything cool or interesting or real, they just, they just sort of go, well, look at this. And they go, well, but it's not really real. And that's the Huff Post. So, Okay. It may end up as the biggest stone ball on the planet. Cool. We got ratings for our magazine. Nice. Oops, we didn't have the video though, because we don't really want to give them the video. So because that'll give them real data. So let's just go to the next part of the article. In a blog written for his archaeological park foundation. No, it's not a blog. It's a scientific article. It's a news site. This is a news site. Jeez, they're saying it's a blog. No, HuffPost is a blog, okay? <laughs> um, <clears throat> but according to UNESCO, blah, blah, blah. So they're going to start. So they, they, they just basically poo-poo it. So here's where they, they, they want to go. The following video illustrates the similarities between uh, the Costa Rican and the, and the Bosnian stone spheres. And then they use the Costa Rican ones against Bosnia, but you, you guys can check that out. Here's geology page. Oh yeah. So this was the second link, right? This was the, sorry, this is a little bit jumpy, but uh, my slides got out of order somehow. I don't know how that happened, but. So geology page was the second link when you, when you did uh, Bosnian stone spheres on, uh, um, on Google, the first one is Shana, little girl that's telling us all the things we need to know because she has the authority of Forbes, so we should trust her, right? Um, and don't worry about giving us any data, but we'll just trust you, it's Forbes. Uh, here's geology page, not geology.com, geologypage.com. I thought, well, I wonder who geology page is. See, while you guys were laughing, singing, dancing, hugging this morning, I was trying to figure out who geology page is. Who owns geology page, okay? Because they're going to they're gonna destroy the idea that, that this is real. And then if you go to find out who they are, there's no address. 
it's not like, you know, we're in Maryland and here's our address, geology page. We have a building with people working in it. No, it's just info at geologypage.com. Really? So there's, that's it? That's your contact info? There's no people? Where's the, who are you? Well, we're geology page and we will tell you that there are no the stone spheres in Boston. Okay. So then they make fun of it at the end. They always do the same thing. It's always ridicule. The jury is still out on whether these spherical objects were handmade by a lost civilization or mother nature's handiwork in growing big balls. So this is geology page. Hmm. So they're just lampooning it, right? And oh, by the way, here's Shana. Sadly, it's not scientific. Why do you feel? It's just science. Why are you sad? Why are you sad that the stone spheres in Boston are likely just natural? Why are you sad, Shana? Why don't you guys get on Twitter? Because Twitter banned me uh, like a year ago, so I can't get on Twitter. So get on Twitter, find Shana, and go, Why are you sad, Shana? Why are you so sad? Okay. Uh, some more nonsense from the orthodoxy. All right, now I'm gonna to get to this last video because this is, you know, when you search for Bosnian stone spheres uh, on YouTube, you get a lot of stuff and, and some of it's pro, some of it's con, but this is uh, one of those that's, that's, that's con, but they, they don't tell you it's con in the title. They want you to come in and think, Wow, it's going to be this amazing thing. And then they slowly make it clear that it's all bullshit, right? So that's one of those. That's how the orthodoxy does it. They bring you in with a, with a neutral title, right? So let's check this out. And, you, and you'll, let's see the authority. Let's see, it. let's see who, just who it is. Let's just see who are these amazing professors and scientists and geniuses and researchers and independent thinkers are that put this video together. Check it out. Cosmos news, cool. It's all about the cosmos and amazing. Archaeologists have found a giant mysterious sphere embedded in the ground in Bosnia. Wait, say what? Now you got a robotic voice? It's not even a person talking? Oh, okay, well, I guess you don't need to have the authority of a person because your cosmos news, right? They claim it is the largest man-made stone ball in Europe and the oldest in the world, dating back more than 1,500 years ago. The stone was found by Samir Osmanijic, nicknamed the Bosnian Indiana Jones. He okay, see this, uh, see this photo right here? This, uh, this shot, it's from the side. It shows the sort of the most unflattering side of it and that's okay there's scientifically you know you can you should show every part of it right but there's this sort of dent in it here and it's a little modeled here and it's a little bit modeled here so they're like yeah let's get that let's get him pointing to something that looks nonsense like crap you know As the sphere is further proof that europe had an advanced civilization that used groundbreaking technology in 2005 Osmanijic claimed that Bosnia's Visoko Valley was the site of hidden ancient pyramids linked by underground tunnels. These claims were largely disputed as being complete fantasy. No. No, they weren't disputed by anybody who, who had come there and done any science. Just saying things is not entering into an argument. So you can't say that they're disputed. Um, the clowns that uh, said that there are no pyramids in Bosnia whether they have a PhD or not, they're still clowns. They just, they just didn't put their clown suits on for, for their disputations. The stone sphere was discovered in March 2016, 80 kilometers north of Visoko, in a forest near the town of Savido Visi. It is roughly three meters across and, Osmanijic claims, it could weigh up to 60 tons. He also described it as the most massive stone ball in Europe. Stone balls have long been linked with ancient civilizations and examples can be found across the globe. The most famous of these are found in Costa Rica, where over 300 granite balls weighing up to 14 tons have been discovered. 
known as Las Bolas, they were believed to have been created by the Dick culture, now extinct. So this is the tribe, these are the tribes they're, that they're talking about, the, the primitives who hammered these with stones. This is super, super, super hard material. So how are you going to shape this so beautifully? How in goodness name would you do that? Why would a primitive tribe do that? Osmanijaj said there used to be 80 of these stone balls in Bosnia, but most of them were destroyed when rumors started circling among locals that gold was... See, they, they love this shot. They love this shot because it, it just looks all crappy. It doesn't look round at all. And inside them, just eight remain now, with the latest discovery being the largest. Osmanijaj believes this stone must be man-made as, even though the materials are yet to be analyzed. He didn't say it, it must be man-made. He said it's artificial. He didn't say anything about man. P.S. The brown and red color of the ball point a very high content of the iron. He says the discovery adds to previous evidence that there was a technologically advanced civilization living in Bosnia. However, critics say the sphere was most likely the result of natural processes. Mandy Edwards, from University of Manchester's School of Earth, Atmospheric and Environmental Sciences, told Mail Online she believes the sphere was probably made by the process of concretion, where rock is formed by the precipitation of natural mineral cement within the spaces between sediment grains. So naturally formed, right? No, no action, no actor, just formed. It formed, and I'm Mandy, and I can tell you. So that's Cosmos News. That's pretty cool, right? That, that's pretty legit. So, you know, they start out and they're talking about it and then they go, however, it's always the same. They bring you in and then they go, but in fact, it's all nonsense. Oh, wait, that's not how I want to do it. Hold on, hold on. Let's do it this way, make a slideshow. So here's Cosmos News. I was like, so who is this? While you guys were having lunch, I was looking at Cosmos News because I wanted to find out for you just who these people are they're making a robotic video that's got 175,000 they've got 175,000 subscribers right that's a lot you know I've got like I don't know a few hundred on my channel on my, my personal channel how'd they get 175,000 with robotic voices who are these people so I just wanted to find out you know oh it's the cosmos news at gmail.com so that's who they are they're in Japan, I guess. Cosmos News. No, no people involved. 83 million views from a robotic voice from an anonymous place in Japan that calls itself the Cosmos News. Interesting. Discover the Cosmos. Now, if you click on this link below the Cosmos News at gmail.com, <laughs> You're gonna find something weird, okay? You're gonna find, let's see if I can find the screen grab, hold on. Uh, let's see if I have the screen grab. Yeah, there it is. Now, do you wanna continue? Like you're looking to find out who the Cosmos News is and it goes security check and, and look at the URL, ffgetsplendidapps.com. You're like, hmm, do I really wanna click on that? Probably not. So you don't click on it. You just get out. And that's, that's what the orthodoxy is. Everywhere you go, everywhere the orthodoxy leads you on the internet, it just disappears into nothingness. There's just no substance there. It's, it evaporates into nothing. If you go on Wikipedia and you check out really important articles about really important things and you look at the sources, they just evaporate into nothing. If you look at the sources for the articles about hummingbirds in your yard, endless sources, but that doesn't matter, it's trivial. But if you look at uh, Bosnian Pyramid's claims Wikipedia page, those sources disappear into nothing. 
a grad student said something, and we're going to use that as a source for our Wikipedia page on the Bosnian pyramids. Wait, a grad student said something? That's your source? A grad student. So um, this has been Jock Doubleday reporting from Science Land, which is just, you know, we just want some evidence. We, just, we don't want character assassination. We want to know what happened, who did what. We want to know that someone did something scientific, vaguely scientific, did some research, and what was it, and who were they, and when was it, and what was their paper called? That's all we want. We just want some science. It's no big deal. It's not like, it's not brain surgery to get science. You, you, you're a scientist. If you're still hanging in, and even if you're not, everybody's a scientist who goes out and uses their eyes and their brains to decide what their eyes are seeing. And maybe you're right, and maybe you're wrong. You, you pose your theory, and, and you, you put that theory out to the global mind and the global mind chooses among the theories and they decide what they think is best. And that changes over time. That's great. Science just keeps changing and morphing and we just do our best, okay? We're doing our best. And the Orthodox is doing their best to squelch anything like science. They don't want science to be performed, period. Check out my article, um, Filtering Out University Indoctrination, super important article. It's got the video in there. I'm at the Bosnian Pyramid showing you the, the clay stone layers and, and showing you that the orthodoxy will tell you that's sedimentary layers. Okay, check out that and check out a defense of science, which talks about the concrete on the pyramid of the sun. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to check out chat really quick, see if there's any chat. I don't think there's any more chat. There's probably nobody left because I went so long. It's 647. It's, it's been almost two hours. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, Great. So I guess, uh, okay, Chad is over here. Brad Smith. Thanks for hanging in, Brad Smith. Thank you, everybody. I'm typing thank you, everybody, for listening to me ramble. I'm glad to have brought the Bosnian stone spheres and stone spheres around the world to you. Sorry I couldn't get to all the more technical information about hardness ratings and all that stuff, but it's so dense and so depressing. What's going on in academia? This is the confusion, the nonsense, the mosh pit of insanity that's, that is academia today. And it's all controlled. It's, 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 the, it's the fog of the matrix. It's the matrix fog, you know. Through the fog, through a natural fog, you can get glimpses of, of the real world, you know. So that's what it is. It's, in the Matrix movie, there's just no, there's no glimpse of the real world at all. You're just in the Matrix solidly. We're not solidly in the Matrix. Occasionally, we get, get glimpses of the real world because we... We're allowed moments of clarity, you know, still. Um, but generally, there's a veil. There's a fog over us, okay? And we, 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 we need to work as hard as we can to keep pushing that fog away, keep calling out the fog for what it is. And orthodoxy is the fog machine, okay? <laughs> um, I didn't think that up before. I'm just thinking it up now, brothers and sisters, okay? Go check out my article, Megasphere, the, the, stone, the stone ball that wouldn't roll away. They want it to go away, my friends. It's not gonna go away. It's gonna stay right there, okay? And we're gonna stay right here uh, speaking the, the best truth that we can about the things that we see, right? It doesn't mean it's the capital T truth. We're just giving our best shot at trying to figure out what, what all these things mean. We're trying to put it together, it's a big puzzle. So let's keep working on the puzzle. Thanks for joining us, Portal to Ascension is an amazing outlet for beautiful um, independent researchers to come and um, spread their knowledge and to give you their shot at, at, at the, their best truth. So let's all, let's all work together to get toward the truth, okay? Peace.